Warren Darling runs a cropping operation in South Canterbury. Following a trip to the UK, he adopted the practice of minimum tillage and the use of retained crop residue for building soil structure. The change allowed Warren to produce a crop of 13.8 tonnes from a hectare in January 2015. In doing so, he broke the Guinness World Record for barley yield. It was a record that had stood for 25 years. We caught up with Warren in October 2015. What we learnt from the record crop we're taking now and putting into our commercial crops, our commercial barley. I can see the potential already. I know it's a dry season this year, but I can see some of the, the I guess, the recipes that we had for the record we've used this year, and I think um, we're still going to come through with a reasonably favourable season, even with it being a little on the dry side now. This is a paddock of wheat, a variety called L45. Wheat is another crop we could look out for a record. It'd take a pretty favourable season considering um, where the record level is at now, but I think these varieties have got the potential to do it. To do a record, uh, you naturally register with Guinness if you want to do a Guinness World Record. And they send you the guidelines and then you um, follow those guidelines through. Well, on the day, it was reasonably low key, so we did it all ourselves. I was the combine guy, I wanted to get as much rain as we could in that tank. Um, then the three boys were involved. One was on doing the paperwork and keeping that up to scratch. Um, one was on the chaser bin. And then the third boy was doing the um, transport to the Weybridge and back again. I had no contact with the guys on the ground. I didn't want to know anything how we were going until we were all done. Um, and it, when we finished, the last truck, two trucks were away getting weighed. And I said to the um, Craig, the boy that was looking after the uh, paperwork, how are we going? He said, row the line now. So it just depended on how much was in those last two trucks that got us to the 13.8 tonne. I think it, it's a um, combination of a lot of things. What we've been doing for the last 10 years with our soil, with our residue management, incorporating all that back in, working the ground to a consistent profile, getting an even nutrient balance through that soil, given the even across the ground, and then what we did on that year's attempt was really no secret recipes. It was just getting everything timed perfectly, best advice we could, using uh, variable rate fertiliser applications and all that. That's all available anyway, so it was nothing secret to it. And then we got the favourable season. Um, that's really what I think got us across the line. Well, as you can see here, we can see all the organic matter that's been building up over the last, as I say, 10 years. We've been uh, incorporating our residues. That's keeping all this top four to five inches free. And you can see the root mass. Going back, we were conventionally tillaging multi-pass, burning our, all our residues, basically compacting the soil with, with cultivation and the uh, number of passes we're doing. So I was lucky enough to get a trip to uh, to the UK to look at what they were doing in the Mintil system. And once we've seen it, um, we came home and we started to adapt towards that. And uh, that's basically where we've gone to from there. So all our rapes, uh, rape residue goes back in, all the wheat, and we do bale some of the barley straw. But everything else is all incorporated back into the soil. Agronomy Solutions are doing all our precision soil testing. So every hectare is tested, and they provide us with a prescription of our base elements. From there, we uh, just do the normal nitrogen application. In the record crop, we only use 22 kilograms of N per tonne of grain produced, which is at the lower end of the scale. Everyone says 25 and above. Oh, the other area we're using is we're using the micronutrients now, zinc, coppers, and all those. And I feel if we can start getting plant nutrition right, get a healthier plant, um, I feel we can cut down again on the amount of nitrogen per tonne of grain produced and also um, fungicide use. This is our all seed rape, which is a third of our area is an all seed rape. And it's grown for um, pure oil uh, New Zealand. It's all delivered up to the processing plant in Rolleston. As you can see, it's just past peak flowering. Um, we've had some pretty good pod set all the way up. Um, Pretty good taproot on the bottom. Um, that's mainly because of our um, cultivation layers, the soil being free down, that's, you know, three to 400, 300 anyway, um, that's getting down there. 
and getting every little bit of moisture there is. So a couple of good rains now and uh, hopefully we're in for a good crop. This is our tractor that we use all the time uh, for cultivation. As you can see, it's on the tracks and it's part of our soil management. The tractor itself weighs about 24, 25 tonne, but it's the area of track that's on the ground. If you want to equate it to a car, it's half the pounds per square inch or per square metre that a car is running down the road. So it gives you an idea how light it is on the ground. It was a significant investment, but to be in the minimum tool system, you need a big cultivator. Uh, so I know it's only five metres wide, but it's the power required to pull that cultivator with the ripping legs, um, the incorporating discs and the packer roller, all in one pass. Um, we only have a one pass system. That's all we use and then we come back after our volunteers are sprayed off and use the cultivator drill. So it needs the horsepower. We needed to avoid that compaction. We've been on tracks now for seven years. I think our rotation is sustainable. We're not into high value crops. We don't use grasses or any of those other specialist crops, mainly because pollination here is an issue in December. So we found that this rotation that we're in um, works pretty well. It's financially viable and I also believe that it's sustainable as far as our soil health and everything over the, for years to come. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.